Hello everybody. The world of Don't Starve Together is governed by the Shadow Queen we now know as Charlie. She hunts us in the dark, builds us our fancy spawn point, and even gives us skin so we can look extra lovely for whatever horrible plan she has for us. But recently I've been curious, what would Charlie think about each and every one of the survivors? She's been shown to be a multi-dimensional antagonist, especially in the latest anime it's short, so I think it would be fun to go into a bit of detail about her feelings towards each survivor. Before she used to be this feral beast that did nothing but hunt, but nowadays she's shown to have a bit more free will, and even emotions. Now there's not going to be a lot to go over, since she has, as of this video, only ever said like 16 words since her inception all those years ago, and half of those words are hidden in the game's code. So this video is going to be mostly headcanons backed by what we've seen and told about Charlie as a person. But enough rambling, let's start with Wendy. Oh yes, we're going to be talking about how she thinks about Wendy thanks to the latest animated short. I believe Charlie mostly feels sympathy towards her. There are obvious parallels to be drawn between them, since they both have sisters, Winona and Abigail, who in a way both lost something, except well, the roles are flipped. Winona lost her sister for so long, and Wendy lost hers forever. I feel like Charlie sees a little bit of herself in Abigail more than anything, how she was the one that was lost, and as we see in the animated short, went out of her way to make sure that Wendy didn't have to lose Abigail once more than she already has. Of course, it's easy to say that Charlie feels guilt for every character in the constant, since she wasn't the one fully responsible for them being here, so I'll save mentioning that for everybody. Let's move on to Wilson. I believe Charlie looks towards him with a sense of gratitude. He was, according to established canon, the sole reason she was able to hunt down Maxwell, and more importantly, the Nightmare Throne. If you want to know more about that, then check out my Charlie video. She couldn't find Maxwell nor the throne for the longest time, and Wilson was the one that led her right to where she needed to be. So I bet Charlie is incredibly grateful for all that Wilson has done, even if it was unwillingly. Sure, she did, um send him back violently, but that was before she assimilated her more level-headed queen role. Though I imagine nowadays she may be a bit more cautious about expressing her gratitude towards Wilson thanks to any assistance he may be providing to Wagstaff. Ah, uh, Willow, somebody that we've seen that has worked with the Shadows before. I bet Charlie is deeply curious about her. Do you think Charlie knows why the Shadow have been hunting her back when she was a child? Do you think she knows that Willow was working for the Shadows before she arrived here? I personally believe that Willow worked directly with the Shadows, not Maxwell or anything, and I bet the Shadows are very secretive with what they tell anybody above, or even potentially beneath them. Could this frustrate Charlie? Or interest her even more? She still offers Willow her boon, so it's safe to say there's no negative blood at play here. Wolfgang is going to be a tricky one, but I'm going to say she sees him as useful. Let's not forget that Charlie has an ulterior motive of rebuilding the shadows, and what better pawn is a easy manipulated 6 foot, well okay, now about 3 foot tall mass of muscle and exploitable fear. I don't feel there's anything negative or personal here, but she needs everybody for what she needs. Though I bet she does respect Wolfgang for adapting to this environment and facing his fears no matter how scared he may be. That's the true definition of bravery, something Charlie possibly lacked before she became queen. But WX78? She's probably concerned about them. They came here outside of the will of the Shadows or even Maxwell, and they show little interest in the Shadow side of things, leaning heavily towards the Lunar side, which Charlie most likely absolutely does not need right now if she wishes to rebuild the Shadows to their full strength. WX's unpredictability, Connections to Alter and Wagstaff make them a loose variable in an otherwise well-oiled machine. But maybe their hatred of Wagstaff can be used to her advantage, help stop the old man from poking around. Time will tell. Wickerbottom time. She's probably in a similar boat to WX or Willow, with Charlie being cautiously intrigued by them. Wickerbottom is shown to know of the constant before her arrival, and seemingly is one of few survivors that isn't completely unhinged and easily manipulated. A logistical woman who sees things for what they really are, but in a world where nothing is what it is. Why did Wickerbottom study the constant before being taken here? How? Could she know Charlie's plans? Or maybe her knowledge is crucial for helping her establish her own goals? Once again, there's no negative blood, but cautious interest, I'd say. Woody is going to be hard to pen somewhere. Like, he's just a regular guy, 
Ish, who seems to be pretty content with living here. No trauma, no strife, just a man who thinks his wife is an axe and uses the moon's magic to turn into a beaver every so often. You know what? If I'm confused about this, then let's say Charlie would be as well. It's not like he poses any threat to her plans, and if anything could be easily swayed to work with our ideals too, but still probably just perplexed by his entire shtick. Let me know what you guys think she thinks. I'm going to be honest, I don't think Charlie thinks about Wes at all. Maybe she's at the very least grateful for him providing a good show to both the survivors and whatever deities there are at play in the constant, with his silly little mind behaviour and catastrophic misfortune. I just can't wait to see what Wes's alignment perks are going to be when he gets his insight tree. Is Charlie going to buff him or make him weaker? That will show how she truly feels about this man failure, who wasn't even supposed to be here in the first place. Oh well, at least Maxwell has somebody to kiss now. But it's time for Maxwell himself. Oh, this is going to be a tricky one. We can see that in the past, Charlie cared for Maxwell incredibly deeply, from an assistant to a friend to possibly even more. I'd say it's a safe assessment that she loved, platonically or not, Maxwell before she befell the circumstances that led them all to this. But when the circumstances arose, she hated him. She wanted nothing more than to find him and pull him off of that stupid throne he found himself on. We can see just how much true anger she harboured towards him by looking at the secret quotes you can find hidden in Maxwell's dialogue files. But was this hatred thanks to the more malicious shadow form she now took? Or was it her own feelings? And who can blame her? The William Carter she once knew was the person she loved, not this Maxwell guy. We can even see this before she was taken that she felt excluded and betrayed when Maxwell became, well, Maxwell. But we still have another step to talk about. The Encore Short. In this video, we see that Charlie has decided to seemingly forgive any bad blood between her and him for whatever purposes she desired. Could this be an actual truce? Or is Charlie still resenting him and wanting to use him for her own goals? Time will tell. She still attacks him in the dark, but this could be seen as her keeping up appearances not to arouse suspicion. If that's the case, then why can she completely ignore and help Winona? Hmm. Those are the original Don't Starve characters. Now it's time to move on to the expansion cast. But before I do, I just wanted to extend a massive thank you to everybody for helping us reach 10,000 subscribers. It wasn't a milestone I expected to hit as soon as I did, or ever for that matter, but I am so eternally grateful for every single one of you, new and old. I had plans for something special, but thought I'd have a bit more time before I would hit it. So for now, I'll once again offer you just the deepest levels of gratitude I ever could. Keep an eye on the Discord for events, and game nights, maybe even live streams soon on the Twitch channel, and whatever silly ways I can find to express my thanks. But enough mushy crap, let's move on to the DLC characters. And who better to start with than Weber? I bet Charlie sees this kid with a level of pride, but also guilt, more so than the other survivors. Guilty because he was tricked here, taken from his loving family and forced into a completely different monstrous form to what he once was, but also proud of the kid for what he was able to adapt to and be strong despite all of this. He's still a kid at heart, but he steps up to survive and look after the other survivors too, offering them lots of silk and best of all, a friend. As for Wigfrid though, you know what, I'd say she's a little bit confused about her. Like how Wigfrid adapted to this environment so quickly and so efficiently. Is it some form of trauma response, or did this girl really yearn for the stage this badly? They were both stage performers in a way, so I feel like Charlie can understand her desire to be in the headlines and spotlight, and even fitting into the role she always wanted to. A warrior and a queen, both incredibly useful roles given the circumstances. Ah, uh, Warley, peak, this guy can't catch a break. Yeah, Charlie feels sorry for him. Come on, I know Charlie's supposed to be this cold, calculating villain, but I bet she has a soft spot for the guy. He came here probably thanks to some sick trick that jerk Maxwell offered him around helping his mother, and now he's stuck here possibly forever. She probably views him in the same way as Weber. Sorry that this guy is stuck here, but thankful that he's such a massive asset to the other survivor's progress. But if she wanted to be a full heartless monster, then she sees him as a perfectly exploitable vessel thanks to his anxiety. Look, I don't view Charlie as evil as Maxwell was, she's more of an opportunist, but as we saw in the latest animated short, she does have a side of humanity to her. 
but Wormwood? Deep-rooted curiosity. No pun intended. This guy knows things that she doesn't, and comes from one of the biggest assets in play in the constant. Alter. Why is he here? Why does he know how to solve the archive puzzles? And a personal theory of mine, how can Charlie use this to her advantage? I bet Charlie purposely brought Wormwood from the Hamlet Plateau because of his connection to Alter, offering her a way into the archive's forgotten knowledge and whatever else that weird portal down there might do. We still don't know after all of these years, but now it's time for Winona, Charlie's older sister. This is going to be another emotional rollercoaster like Maxwell. Originally, we knew that they got along just like regular old siblings. But if we look at the stage play, as they got older, Winona was more and more caring of Charlie, to the point of it becoming suffocating to her. I imagine Winona didn't want Charlie running off to the big city with this Maxi guy, but Charlie just wanted her own freedom and liberty after most likely being choked with protection her entire life. And then what happened? She went to the city, performed with Maxwell, and ended up as Queen as an entirely different reality. Bit of a leap in consequences, but that's how the dice fell I'm afraid. I did forget a step though, that Winona was taken by Charlie before she became Queen, as seen in Winona's animated shorts. But what does Charlie think of her now? Probably everything. She's guilty that she's stuck here now, she's ashamed that Winona was probably right about being protective over her, she might even feel a sense of pride at knowing that she's the one protecting her sister now. It's a lot for her, and it's taking a massive toll on both of these sisters. She offers Winona some of the strongest boons she can afford in the constant, with darkness immunity and even immortality. All of these emotions are mixing together in ways I don't think even I could ever comprehend. Something for its own video, I feel. Of course, we still have to consider that yes, Charlie might still view her as an asset among all of this, but a topic for another video. Oh man, let's swivel on to somebody who's less deep and emotional. Wartox. Yeah, this dimensional hopping imp who has no connections here or there is probably a bit frustrating to Charlie. Wartox knows more than he lets on, and has abilities to come and go as he pleases. He could be a valuable asset, or a dangerous risk. But to Charlie, he's an unpredictable variable that could make or break her entire plan. Frustrating that she can't keep a tab on him at all. Or maybe she doesn't need to worry, since she knows his true origins. What do you think? Took us long enough to arrive at my main? What? This is just a random, semi-intelligent murm that somehow tags along with the rest of the survivors now. But let's say Charlie sees her as an oddity, one that she ought to keep an eye on. A good thing to take note is that in either of her Insight Tree perks, there is no mentions of the Shadow Queen or Cryptic Founder bestowing work with anything at all. All of her powers are coming directly from the Shadows or the Moon. Is this something Charlie should worry about? The fact that there's beings out there that can utilise their powers, like how Wormwood can? But now it's time for somebody less frisky and powerful, Walter. Same boat as Weber, I'd say. Guilty that this poor kid ended up here, but oh so proud of him for stepping up to the plate and doing what he needs to do to survive. Though it's less impressive than Weber, since Weber is a scared little boy, and Walter is waltzing through on the power of ignorance. Still something to be proud of, I'd say. And especially useful if he shows little fear. And last but not least, Wanda. I'd clock her in the same place as Willow with a dash of Wartox. Charlie is probably either frustrated or deeply confused by her origins. This all roots around how much prominence Charlie has over the Shadows. If she has full dominion, or if they have full dominion over her, then she hates Wanda for dabbling with the timeline and messing with her and their plans. But if she doesn't have full control over them, then she just wants to know what she did to annoy the ones she wishes to rebuild, and just how exactly she got her hands on all those Shadow Clockwork pieces. I bet it's to do with Witherstone. Another time, though. And that's my thoughts on Charlie's thoughts on all of the survivors. Let me know how you'd think she'd think down below or in the Discord. Once again, though, I wish to thank every single one of you for all you've given me the past year. But it's only getting started, I feel. Take care, everybody, and have a lovely day. Bye-bye.